The Codex Sinaiticus was the book that tipped the balance away from the historical preserved Bible and changed hundreds of scriptures in crucial places. Did you know that Sinaiticus cast doubt on the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Neither Sinaiticus nor Vaticanus in its present form contains Mark 16, 9 to 20. Do you know what that means? For the last 150 years, to a textual critic or a Bible doubter, it has meant two things. One, Jesus and his resurrected body is not in the Gospel of Mark. Textual criticism then claims that Mark is the first gospel, not Matthew. You'll see why in a minute. That would mean that the first gospel did not have a resurrected Jesus. Two, they say, since Mark was the first gospel written, then the whole doctrine of Christ's bodily resurrection is not a part of the original gospel. They say it was added later by the church. That's funny, because Jesuit-educated Norman Geisler said none of these changes affect any basic doctrine of the Christian faith. I think the resurrection of Christ is a pretty basic doctrine, don't you? Want to hear more of what happens when you trust the Sinaiticus? And how you can answer those critics? Hi, I'm David Daniels from Chick Publications. I know that it's essential to their theories that Mark has to have been written first. Everywhere, even in Wikipedia, they'll tell you that it was in the 5th century, the 400s AD, that people got the idea that the Gospels should be Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, in that familiar order. They even go on to list what they say are 5th century, 400s AD, documents that have that order. But what they don't tell you, that would hurt their theory, is their beloved Sinaiticus and Vaticanus are also in the order of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Shh! Don't tell them I told you. Let them look it up for themselves. But they don't stop there. What comes after the resurrection? The ascension, right? Get ready for this. The Sinaiticus does not have the ascension of Christ in the Gospel of Luke either. Here's the page of Sinaiticus that has Luke 24, 51. This is the area I'm going to focus on. It says here in English, um, and it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them. But can you see that arrow right there? That refers to the words at the top of the page. Up here, they show the rest of the verse, and was carried into heaven. But you can see it for yourself. It was not a part that the original scribe wrote. Someone wrote it in different ink at the top of the page. What does this mean? Well, let me ask you. How many verses of the four Gospels do you find Christ's bodily ascending into heaven? Just this one. So, if this one doesn't belong, according to 20th century critic C.S.C. Williams, quote, there is no reference at all to the ascension in the original text of the Gospels. It's a one-two punch. They say, Mark is the first Gospel, their Sinaiticus, Vaticanus, Mark is missing the bodily resurrection. So they say the doctrine of Jesus' resurrection from the dead is a later addition. Two, here in Luke 24, 51, Sinaiticus is missing the ascension into heaven of our risen Savior. 
So they say the doctrine of Jesus' ascension into heaven is also a later addition. Oh, and did I add that by first gospel, they also meant that the first gospel was written about the year 80 AD, after the fall of Jerusalem and after most of the apostles and the eyewitnesses were dead. Still think no basic doctrine of the Christian faith is affected? Now, let's turn the tables on the text critics. Please get out a King James Bible and look at Luke chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. It is important. Pause if you need to. Verse 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, Luke says that many have written accounts of the gospel story. So there were gospels, plural, before Luke wrote. Verse 2. Even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Here Luke said that there were eyewitnesses back to the beginning that were still alive and ministered the word and passed the information to Luke and others. So they are obviously still alive for the earlier gospels like Matthew and Mark. But text critics like my old professor, the late Dr. Ralph Martin said, Luke was written in the second century after they were all dead. Verse 3, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. So Luke took it in hand to check on the story from the very first scene, talking with eyewitnesses and to write it down in order as it happened. So get this, these modern scholars are calling the very first verses of the Gospel of Luke a lie. Do you trust Luke or the text critics? Now go to Acts chapter 1 verses 1 to 2. You need to see and hear this. Verse 1. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Nobody I found disputes that the same guy wrote both Luke and Acts. Uh, Luke is here referring to his gospel. Verse 2. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Whoops. Until the day he was what? Taken up. Luke just told us his gospel ends with the ascension. Imagine that. The original New American Standard Bible from 1963 until 1994 actually removed those words from Luke 24 and was carried up into heaven, copying Sinaiticus. So, they may have copied the American Standard 1901 or the English Revised Version 1881 and 85, but that's no excuse for taking out God's words. So, the Lockman Foundation translators followed the Sinaiticus on this, even though Vaticanus and Alexandrinus and almost every other manuscript in existence has those words. And on top of it, Luke himself told us they were there. Who are you going to believe? The text critics or the author, Luke himself, inspired by the Holy Ghost? Gail Ripplinger pointed out in New Age Bible versions, people saw the blunder. And in 1995, an embarrassed Lockman Foundation released the updated New American Standard with even more mistakes, but mm, they put the ascension back into Luke 24:51. So, Sinaiticus is wrong. The text critics were wrong. And someone removed those words, gutting the doctrine of Christ. 
I think I see Satan's claw prints. I wanted to get more into the, to the dating of Sinaiticus, but I'll have to put it in another vlog. But here's the summary. Ready? One, two, three. One, only Sinaiticus and Vaticanus remove Jesus' bodily resurrection from Mark 16, 9 to 20. Two, Sinaiticus, not even Vaticanus, takes away Jesus' bodily ascension into heaven out of Luke 24, 51, the only reference to Jesus' bodily res ascension in the four Gospels. Three, two of the most basic foundational doctrines of the Christian faith, Jesus' physical resurrection and Jesus' physical ascension into heaven are totally removed from crucial gospel passages in the Sinaiticus. Then, unsuspecting Bible college students, the future pastors and leaders, are taught that they don't belong. Then they will teach those same Bible-doubting lies to their congregations or classes. It's just another step in creating a Bible flexible enough for anyone to believe. One world Bible for one world religion. This is the fruit of textual criticism. And this is the fruit of trusting Sinaiticus. If this is what those pro sinaiticus guys want, they can have it. I refuse to bow. I'm going to trust God's holy and preserved words in the 400 plus year tried, tested, and proved King James Bible. Let them show me their doubt. And I'll show them my faith. And we'll see who stands in the judgment day. God bless you and have a wonderful day.